It's trouble time. Welcome to the very first episode of Subscriber Gameplay Breakdown. So basically, I'm just going to react to it and just give my tips and tricks on what this person can do to improve. So if you're interested in having your gameplay broken down by me, hit that link in the description down below and it will take you to this submission form where you can go ahead fill it out it's really simple and easy to do just gonna ask you a couple questions so i can get to know you as a player first for those who have submitted already don't worry i will get to you eventually i'm just doing this in the order that they were submitted any tips that i do have to offer to this person it's just constructive criticism and i'm not trying to bash the player at all remember we're trying to get better here also if i do miss a couple things that he could have improved on definitely leave a comment down below and let him know what he can improve on all right so part of the questionnaire on this form is what is your current kd so this player's kd is a 1.09 kd ratio and he has been playing call of duty on and off since modern warfare 1 and he's been playing the game seriously since black ops 4 came out so he does have some sort of experience and his reason for submission is that he's considering streaming because he really enjoys the game but he wants to get much better than he is and there's definitely nothing wrong with that all right so let's go ahead and start this reaction by the way guys i'm sorry for the quality ahead of time uh this is just youtube and if you're able to upload in at least 720p 60 frames per second i would really appreciate that just so that the viewing quality is good for people who are watching this video but of course 1080p is probably the best case scenario so it looks like he's using the ram 7 here and he's playing on ramaza so let's see where he goes for his opening route and he is actually going to a route that I would normally take. Now, I wouldn't personally go into the ruins. I would actually rather get a head glitch. Now, he did die right there. And one thing off the bat that I would recommend if you are going to play on Ramaza is to actually go straight down towards this middle area right here. Because number one, you get a really good clear view of the enemies coming in from their spawn and also you do have that head glitch as well that will protect your body so that's why i'd recommend go up here first uh versus just going in through this part of the ruins right here because you don't really get to see a lot compared to if you were to head glitch right there so that's pretty much the result of that and why i would recommend going up to that head glitch all right so it looks like he's gonna go back to that area he most likely probably wants to get a revenge kill now he does spot an enemy here and I like how he's taking a bit of cover. You know, he's not just standing in the middle. So there's some gunfire coming here. All right. So one thing I would definitely recommend in this situation is to not go directly into the middle of the line of sight, because like I was saying earlier, that head glitch is pretty powerful. And when somebody is head glitching in that area, there's a really high percentage chance that you are going to die if you're just standing here in the middle. In fact, I just don't recommend it at all. However, if you do feel the persistence to want to go ahead and kill that guy, I would definitely recommend cutting through the middle here instead so that you can close that gap between yourself and the enemy and at least give you a higher percentage of winning that gunfight because the closer you are, obviously, the higher percentage chance that you will win that gunfight. So this is the result of that. As you can see, he stood no chance at all. Now he's spawned in from the back alleyway. So I see that he's going in through the house, which is a good move, something I would definitely recommend. He's taking high ground here and he does see an enemy and he takes him out by flanking him which is a good flank now he's going back up here to check out what's going on and again this is also a good move by him and i can tell he probably does watch my videos because i do advocate going through that house versus just walking through that alleyway so uh one thing that i do like that he did right here let me just pause it is that i'm pretty sure he noticed on his mini map or his compass that there was activity as you can see he was about to go into that portion of the ruins but instead he goes up here for the head glitch which is a good move uh but i wouldn't i wouldn't push right away i would just let the situation unfold yes he did get the kill there but now he puts himself in a situation where he has no escape route or backup plan as you can see he's just dead in the center of the ruins right now and it looks like he's pretty much in no man's land you know there was one enemy uh, to his left right here and as you can see there is another enemy here so when you're in this particular area of the map and you're just all alone in general it's always a good idea to position yourself in a way where you're able to escape that situation if you need to so if i was him i would have probably stayed at that head glitch for a little bit and then retreated and then went up to the cafe because i know for a fact that they're coming in from their spawn right here and like i said earlier having a clear view of where the enemies are is essential and it's a power position so going 
going up to the market rooftop right above the cafe and looking through that window would definitely be a good example of where he should have positioned himself instead of just going for the kills here because as you can see there really is no place to go he's standing in the middle and as a result he did die right there so always think about those things when you're playing the game is you know am i in a good position right now to escape the situation should i be in a tight situation so he does pick up a free kill there after he came in from a spawn so now he's back in the ruins area he's picking off these guys and uh, like i said earlier in the beginning of the game this is a really good head glitch it's easy to get kills from that area so now if i were him i would move up to the top of the rooftop like i was saying before and another thing about that situation why he got taken out so quickly is because he stayed in the same spot for way too long now that's why in my videos i always stress every time you get a kill make sure you move from location to location so right here, it looks like uh, he's dealing with another enemy. Unfortunately, I believe it was the C4 that killed him. So let's play that back. So another thing that I do want to point out about this play right here that he did really well is he approached the situation pretty cautiously and he slid around the corner. Now, him sliding around the corner helps him be a harder target to hit for the opponent because you're much lower to the ground and your opponent doesn't see that right away. But as you can see, he has a clear view of the opponent and as a result he was able to take out that kill now in this situation i would definitely retreat get out of there he has a stim shot he should definitely use it instead of just trying to go for the kill you know that's what i mean by being passive aggressive just because you see a potential kill does not mean that you should always go for it right away so now he spawned in here in the construction site and there's nothing really you can do about that i mean you know you do spawn in the game and you do die it is a thing and you know it does happen so now he's going into the back alleyway and he is passing through the house which is exactly what i would have done get a good clear view of what's going on before you proceed which is good see it's not always bad you know criteria that i'm going to offer some insight on you know I'm, i am gonna point out the good things that he does as well so one thing i also did notice and this is a small little minor detail that maybe you watching could also improve on is watch how he just casually walks around this corner now you want to make it a habit to slide around those corners and pre-aim because you never know if there's going to be an enemy so instead of just walking around just slide you know slide and always assume that there's going to be an enemy there i mean that's the best way that i could put it always assume there's going to be somebody there so he did notice that there was some activity going on over here as you can see somebody just got into a gunfight here so that's why he's being cautious which is a good move always check before you proceed and he concluded that there's really no one there yet so it looks like he wants to push into their spawn and you know you have to make these decisions really quickly in game and he does pick up a nice kill there uh, but if i was him in this situation i would have definitely already pushed out here you know sticking to the outskirts of the map definitely does put you in a good position to survive as long as you can because you have less factors of being shot from different directions so by standing here in the middle you're giving the enemy an opportunity to cave you in from this area as well as this area right here which is where this guy came from so fortunately he probably heard him in game and he was able to get the jump on this guy and get the easy kill so now he's looking into their spawn this is exactly where they should be spawning in from and in this case i wouldn't push it you know but uh you know those are things that you'll learn while you're playing the game and as you can see his teammate did end up spawning in there because he pushed uh too far into the spawn so now he's looking up here somebody just rpg'd he throws a c4 which is exactly what i've done and unfortunately the c4 did not get him so he's investigating it right now he's got a teammate in front of him so before this situation unfolds i would just let my teammate go first and see what happens to him so if he dies then that tells me i have a couple options i can either be aggressive about it and try to kill off the guy because doing that catches the enemy off guard because he doesn't expect someone else to be there or i can just flee from the situation right now let's go ahead let's wait let's watch also another thing i do have to point out is i'm noticing that he's looking at his teammates when they're firing their weapon so a good thing that you should also practice is always looking at that minimap because you can't really see it it might be blurred in the video but there are lines around this guy's triangle so as you can see he's firing his weapon and then he turns around to take a look and see what's going on you don't want to do that because by the time you turn back around there could be an enemy standing in your face so always get used to looking at that minimap and be like hey man my teammate is firing his weapon and you know i don't need to look in that direction because i know where that gunfight's coming from and it's from a friendly you know i don't need to worry about that all right so his teammate just died 
He died from somebody most likely camping up top here in the construction area. I would definitely avoid that at all costs. There's just absolutely no way you're going to win those gunfights because of the high positioning that they do have on this map when you're in that area. Now, there is a, an enemy approaching, and he did take him out right here. So I'm 100% sure that his teammate died to somebody camping in the construction site. Now, there was another enemy there that he didn't know was there. As you can see, look, if you pause it right here, his teammate is engaging in a gunfight with somebody who's camping all the way up there in the construction site. And then the enemy also had another teammate that was going after this guy, but also came up on him as well. So that's why I would just approach the situation cautiously, either, you know, see what's going on. Don't run in there right away, you know, pre-aim first before going into there. So I wouldn't go back to this area, to be honest, because I know I'm going to be outnumbered. So as he approaches these stairs, if you pause it, there are two enemies that just died in this area. They're being mowed down. I would just forget about the situation. I would go around to the other side of the map and just flank or find a different situation where I can win a gunfight and gain some momentum and eventually make my way to the back of the construction site and flanking these guys here because these guys are like, okay, man, these are free kills. So we're just gonna keep mowing down these people as they walk through this line of sight. So they're pretty much distracted at this point. So if you took the time to go around and flank, take the long way, you would have been able to get those double kills. So uh, let's play it back here. So his teammate died again, that's another indication. And you don't always want to hold on to your C4 like that as well while you're walking because you're putting yourself on a vulnerability to get shot and you're not giving your chance to engage in a gunfight. Now he hears some footsteps down here. I I wouldn't go for this kill. All right, so he does get a good double kill out of it, but the reason why I suggest not to do this is because if you look at the minimap, your teammates are pretty much in line with you or behind you and they're all facing this direction which in theory would say that the enemies are spawning in from this end of the map so if we play it back right he hears those footsteps he goes for it right away but see what happens here is that when you jump down here there could be enemies in the construction site or coming in from their spawn that will shoot you from behind I'm not saying he got lucky at all or this was a bad choice to make because he did get a double kill out of it but I'm saying at least like maybe nine times out of 10, you might be shot in the back. And it's always best to be better safe than sorry, you know? That's something that you need to practice when you're playing this game, you know? Don't always go for those kills just because you hear somebody's footsteps. You know, you always have to assess the situation and the scene that you're in right now. You know, if I'm gonna jump down this building, would I get shot from behind? Is that a possibility? All right, so uh, he throws a C4 out here because he got a hit marker on someone, which is a good move. That's definitely what I would do just to make sure. I'll definitely move up to the top of this house now. A teammate just got taken out downstairs. And I'm pretty positive that it was the guy that he just killed. So this is good. He's, it looks like he's gaining some momentum here. He's pre-aiming. I would definitely close this door and go back upstairs so that if they want to proceed underneath just like that, then I would be able to hear the audio cues and uh, alert my attention to go downstairs. All right, so an enemy just spawned out. Another free kill, which is nice. It looks like he's going to go back to that spot. Picks up another free kill on his way back to the house. Uh, and again, he's uh, shooting at an enemy because he probably heard his footsteps, which is fine. You know, if, if you're generally a casual player, you know, that's something that's quite common, actually. You know, you, you just have to play this game enough to understand the differences between uh, what's your enemy footsteps and what is a friendly footstep. That's why I go back to talking about looking at your minimap all the time, because if you heard those footsteps and you saw an e and you saw a teammate on your minimap behind you, then that would lead to, okay, well, that's most likely a teammate. I don't need to look behind me. Looks like he just keeps going back to this house here. I would definitely switch up my strategy, maybe go through the construction site. You've got some teammates there. It's obviously safe. He picks up another kill there who just killed his teammate. And again, yeah, this area is a hot spot right now. So I would definitely recommend going through the construction site, going around through the barbershop, in through the ruins, and flanking them through there. Or just take a shortcut through the market rooftop and uh, cut in through the ruins. So he's ducking here. Good job for throwing the C4. Now he's outnumbered here. Now even if he did have the high ground, the colors in this game make it a little bit more difficult to see where enemies are coming from. And in that particular head glitch, it's really hard to see enemies. Now, there is somebody who just dropped down here. He goes back into the uh, back alleyway into that house, gets a nice kill. 
So I'm looking at where his teammates are in the minimap right now. If I was him, I would definitely just chill in this house for a little bit. Let the enemies come out of their spawn so I can pick them off easily. So let's see if he does that. So he's taking a peek. He's looking at his teammate where he's going. So he's filling in those lanes correctly so far throughout the video from what I've seen. He's pre-aiming into the construction site where the enemies could possibly be based on the positioning of his teammates. So he's looking cautiously. Okay, good. So that's the end of the match. So he got 16 kills, which is not bad, man. Those 16 kills went by really fast. His team got the victory. And not too bad, man. Any final thoughts that I have would be to just be mindful of your movement. Take a look at that minimap and associate it with the sounds that you hear in game. And also how he moves around those corners. Definitely get used to pre-aiming around every corner. Always assume that there's an enemy there. And also if you die in the same spot multiple times, just leave it alone. You know, find a different route to take and you might come up on an enemy who's by himself by flanking. And then eventually you'll make your way back to those people who were farming those kills on you and your teammates. So yeah, guys, I would really like it if you guys would leave some comments down below. Let him know what he could personally work on in case I didn't touch up on some things that I may have missed. Make sure to leave a like on this video so that I know that you guys want to keep seeing this kind of content where I break down your guys' gameplay. And I will try my best to post these every week so that you guys don't have to wait too long. So yeah, guys, make sure you subscribe if you're new around here so you can make your way back to the channel join turbo nation today